There is a time for all things. No doubt many people feel the time for recognition of Australia's Indigenous peoples is long overdue. But we're here today because we believe that there's a time to be reconciled and a time to recognise. And as we approach the 50th anniversary of the 1967 referendum, that time has well and truly come. Recognition means many things to many people. At the beginning of the 21st century, real recognition of Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders means at least two things. On the one hand, it involves symbolic recognition, the formal adoption of a statement that recognises the historical experience of these peoples and their enduring place in the Australian nation. On the other hand, it involves substantive recognition, measures to ensure that Indigenous people have reason to believe that the past discrimination will not be repeated in the future. The proposal we that we advance today is intended to address the need for symbolic recognition. That does not mean that we're opposed to any other form of recognition. We've come to appreciate the importance of repealing Section 25 of the Constitution and why it's important to amend Section 5126. And indeed, why it's important to ensure that the voice of Indigenous people is heard in the legislative process. But our proposal does not address any of those concerns. If our proposal finds favour with the Australian people, it will be as part of a package that addresses this range of concerns. So what is our proposal for symbolic recognition? We propose that instead of trying to insert some modest legalistic statement into the Constitution, we should rather consider adopting an Australian Declaration of Recognition, a statement of 300 words which contains a powerful and poetic statement of the nation that Australia has become and our aspirations for the nation's future. When words are added to the Constitution, even to the preamble, they're subject to interpretation by the High Court. As history has shown, sometimes when the High Court considers the meaning of words, they take on a different complexion from those which the people campaigning for their insertion thought that the words actually meant. It is these unintended consequences which are at the heart of conservative objections to constitutional change. Removed from the Constitution, the Australian Declaration of Recognition provides the best way to address the historical aspirational and cultural issues while avoiding legal technicalities. Recognition will be less constrained, more generous and loftier if a symbolic statement appears in an Australian Declaration of Recognition rather than in the Constitution. Our Constitution is a practical and pragmatic charter of government. It contains rules. It is not the repository of the nation's story, nor of the nation's aspirations. We believe that symbolic recognition should occur in an Australian Declaration of Recognition, which would stand beside the Australian Constitution in much the same way that the American Declaration of Independence stands alongside the Constitution of the United States. Queen Victoria's favourite Prime Minister, Benjamin Disraeli, once wrote, in a progressive country, change is constant, and the question is not whether you should resist change, which is inevitable, but whether that change should be carried out in deference to the manners, the customs, the laws and the traditions of a people, rather than in deference to arbitrary and general doctrines. Today, we know that change is inevitable. The question is whether the change is required in order to achieve real recognition of Australia's Indigenous peoples should be carried out in deference to the Australian Constitution or whether those changes will be made in deference to some arbitrary doctrine. There is a time for all things, a time to be reconciled and a time to recognise. There is also a time to uphold the Constitution. We're committed to finding a solution that enables change to be made, 
but which ensures that in recognising Indigenous people, we also uphold the Constitution. In short, we advocate a conservative approach to constitutional recognition. In his recent quarterly essay, Noel Pearson writes of conservatism, it is insight into the imperfection and mystery of human nature. This imperfection and mystery will ultimately make liberal and social democratic structures inadequate and bindu, without taste. For one who's identified himself with the radical centre, Mr Pearson demonstrates a highly sensitive appreciation of conservative values. However, he's no theorist, he's a man on a mission. He's committed to achieving a better future for his people. They lived through the discrimination of the past and they have a legitimate anxiety that the past not be repeated and that measures be put in place to ensure that things are done in a better way. But to his very great credit, he understands and respects the anxieties of conservatives. He demands that conservatives need to understand his people's position and he has a right to demand this because he's taken the trouble to understand the conservatives position. In a rightful place, he writes, in trying to understand conservative objections to the expert panel's proposals, it is important to understand the Australian mix of liberalism and conservatism, and the influence of constitutional conservatism, the influential group of Australian constitutional experts whom Greg Craven dubbed the Concons. This group, convening as the Samuel Griffith Society, values liberalism and democracy. They insist on parliamentary sovereignty and are ready to accuse judges of usurping parliamentary democracy. They value the Australian Constitution as inherited wisdom. These are the priorities that Julian and I share, and they're not the same as Mr Pearson's immediate priorities. But we've stri striven to understand his priorities as he's demonstrated an understanding of ours. So it's a very great pleasure for us, and indeed an honour, that he's agreed to launch our contribution to a debate that is so critical to his life and the life of his people. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chairman of Cape York Partnership, Noel Pearson. <laughs> 